Now, in Australia, the military is now patrolling the streets to enforce the lockdown. About 300 troops have been sent to Australia's largest city to help overstretched police monitor home quarantine for coronavirus patients and potentially set up roadblocks. The troops will help the police on a door-to-door -door search to check if people who've contracted COVID are isolating. Dystopian? You bet. In Germany, they're now banned from even protesting COVID dictates. But thousands still showed up in Berlin to voice their anger anyway. Here's how they were met. After participants did not heed orders to abide by hygiene rules, masks and social distancing, police used pepper spray and truncheons to break up the crowd. 600 were arrested. Sounds like China and Hong Kong. Here now is Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State and Fox News contributor. Mr. Secretary, great to see you tonight. Um, this is terrifying to me personally, but you do get the sense that there are some Democrats who wish this, this was playing out the same exact way in the United States. Well, Laura, thanks for having me on. It would be an enormous mistake to try anything that was remotely like what you just described, what was happening there in Germany, to go to the lockdowns that are happening in other countries across the world would make no sense for the United States. There's scant evidence that these kind of lockdowns do a whole lot of good. And we know they do an enormous amount of damage to the economy, to the mental health of the people that live there. Uh, I, it saddens me when I see uh, Democrat governors and even Democrats in Washington, D.C., who want to head down that path, who want to go back to lockdowns, back to the kind of things that we, we tried, right? It was 15 days to stop the spread. Uh, the, the, the right answer was to give people good information, sound information, truthful information, let them make the own, their own decisions for themselves. And then the work that our administration did to develop warp speed and these vaccines also has delivered good outcomes all but, across the but world. But Mr. Secretary, these are our allies, our vaunted allies. <laughs> And these are, I mean, Biden is yeah, well, well, lavishing <laughs> praise on them for how they're, he's working with them. They have a great new relationship. Uh, this looks like China and Hong Kong. Well, Laura, everything about the Biden administration has demonstrated that it wants to look more like Europe, right? It wants to have bigger government, spend more money, have people work less. Uh, European socialism is the model that the Biden administration has adopted. They, they've gotten in bed with them on Iran. They've done the same with respect to climate change. You're, you're right. I, I suspect with respect to how they're approaching how to respond to this virus, they're thinking about things the same way. It's not about freedom. It's not about the American tradition. It's not about the things we know best about how to make sure people are, have the information they need to stay safe and, safe yeah. and healthy. Mr. Secretary, at the same time, we have uh, Biden promising that we're going to get Europe to work with us against China. And yet even NBC is saying the U.S. struggles to unite the Democratic European Union allies against China. It's just not it's not yeah. happening. So they're just ignoring Biden altogether and cutting their own deals with China. What does that do to U.S. national security? Yeah, it's really dangerous. We began the effort to convince the Europeans that it was time to get serious with respect to responding to the Chinese Communist Party. We'd begun to make progress. We made real progress in getting them to kick Huawei out of their country, right? Uh, telecommunication systems that were going to spread not only their information, but American information into the Chinese system. No, the, the administration hasn't yet been able to convince the Europeans, certainly the big two, France and Germany, to work alongside of us. But I think there's real opportunity. Besides those two countries, there are many European countries who I do think understand this threat from China in the same way that you and I do. And I hope the Biden administration can rally them and those two large economies to say that the West must stand together against the tyranny and communism that are emanating from China today. Yeah, but the problem is there's no there's no price to be paid from Biden. He's not going to he's not end up doing anything to them. It's, they're just going to keep rolling forward, cutting their own deals. That's the concern. But speaking of China, Mr. Secretary, just moments ago, Bill Gates was on CNN and he was asked about the investigations into the origins of COVID. How important do you think it is to understand how this happened, how it started? Um, I mean, is that critical in terms of preventing in the future? No, the source isn't going to change, you know, the need for masks and vaccines and the need to have a, a very different regimen so that, uh, you know, all countries could get on top of the cases very quickly and be more like Australia than Europe or the United States. So, Mr. Secretary, it's not vital that we find out what happened to prevent the next pandemic? 
Wow, that, that's really something. Uh, I, I must say, it's absolutely essential that we understand how this virus escaped, where it escaped from. Re remember too, Laura, that lab, the, the lab that I believe this virus came from is still operating. It's still conducting research on viruses. The, the military and their biological experts are still working there. Th this could happen again tomorrow or, or the next day. It's absolutely imperative that we understand how the Chinese Communist Party foisted this virus upon the world to say otherwise is, well, frankly, it's at best naive. Uh, yes or no, are you in favor of Biden's uh, about-to-be-announced policy that foreigners visiting the United States have to show vaccination status? No, ma makes no sense. There are much better ways to protect the American people than to begin to have international standards for who can come in showing some kind of card. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's unlikely to actually work for the American people. Secretary Pompeo, great to see you. Thank you so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.